This morning, we'd like to draw your attention to the 16th chapter of Judges. And beginning with verse 19, it's the story of Samson. And at this point in his life, he met this gal, Delilah. And uh, so she is seeking to uh, find the secret of his strength and is pressing him for this information. And in verse 19, she made him sleep upon her knees and she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself. And then that tragic verse, and he knew not that the Lord had departed from him. The Philistines took him, put out his eyes, brought him down to Gaza, bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Story of Samson, story of a man who could have gone down in history as one of the strongest and the greatest heroes of all time. But instead he went down in shame because of his weakness. Samson was a Nazarite from birth and intended to be, through his life, a man who was separated unto God and consecrated unto the Lord's service. Samson seemed to be extremely strong physically. He killed a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. He carried the gates of Gaza some 40 miles away uh, to uh, the area right outside of Hebron. Uh, Though he was physically very strong, morally, he was very weak. He could conquer the Philistines, but he couldn't conquer his own lust. It seemed like he had a penchant for falling in love with the wrong women. You say, but Chuck, you can't help who you fall in love with. Well, I beg to differ with that one. Uh, he fell in love with this gal in Timnath. It was a Philistine city. Had he not gone to Timnath, he would have never met her, never fallen in love with her. He fell in love with Delilah. Uh, again, uh, had he not been in a Philistine city, he would have never met her and thus would have never fallen in love. We find that if we go into the wrong places, we oftentimes expose ourselves to temptations and to dangers. There are places that a child of God has no business being. As a man consecrated to God, he had no business being there in the Philistine cities and uh, falling in love with these Philistine girls. Venturing into the enemy's territory can oftentimes get you into big trouble. First of all, come down from dangerous places. There are so many places that are so very dangerous. So many places that are so dangerous. It's like I tell young men, a young man came to me a while back, a very godly young man going to seminary at this moment, very godly fiancé. He came into my office weeping, and I know that he's not, he's a man's man. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a strong man. He came in and he was weeping. I said, Son, what's wrong with you? He said, I try so hard. My, my fiance and I, we try so hard to be pure and holy, and we pray and we fast, but every once in a while when we're together, something happens. We've never, we've never had sex together, but we've often gone too far, and, and it's made both of us miserable and hating ourselves, and it's destroying us, and what can I do? And I said, well, what do your counselors tell you to do? He said, well, they, they've told me this is a hard situation. It's a hard thing to be young. It's a difficult, dangerous thing to be in love. And we need to pray more and fast more. And, and I said, do me a favor, go back to your counselors and tell them Paul Washer said they're a bunch of idiots and, and should keep their mouth shut. 
And he said, what do you mean? I said, I'm serious, young man. You tell them to do that. He said, why? I said, because they give vain counsel. I said, young man, are you more spiritual than me? And he probably was. But I said, are you more spiritual than me? Have you been followed through terrorists, by terrorists through the jungle while preaching the gospel? Have you risked your life for Christ? He said, no, Brother Paul. I said, if you're not more spiritual than me, then why are you trying to do things I would never do? He said, what do you mean? I said, young man, the Bible says you're in hand-to-hand combat, face-to-face combat with the devil himself. But when it comes to youthful lust, he says, flee. That means to tell me what's in you is more dangerous than the devil himself. And I said, you're young, young man, those counselors of yours ought to be telling you that you should never be alone with that girl. You should never be alone with any girl unless it's your mother, your sister, your bride, or your daughter. And until the day that hand of hers, by her father's own authority, is placed in yours. Stay away. You cannot beat this. And that's the same thing I tell you this morning. You cannot fight against this immorality. You cannot fight against this impurity. You cannot arm yourself with a boatload of principles and think that you can walk among danger and walk away safe. It's impossible. You have to come down from these haunts. Come down from these dangerous places. You have to. Do you have a television? I do. It's not connected to anything. We watch tapes, videos of my, my two and a half year old boy and I the other. I was so happy the other night. We sat down and watched through Gates of Splendor together. He watched the whole thing. I was so happy. Are there some good things out there that I could see in that television? Yes, there is. I, I can. Can I make use of it? Yes, most certainly I can. Can I watch ABC, CBS, and NBC? Absolutely not. Don't tell me you want to walk with God and you want the Holy Spirit to fall down on this place and yet you'll watch things before you get in the pulpit that grieve the Holy Spirit or when you come out of the pulpit standing before your people telling them you want the Spirit to move, you finish, you're tired, you go home, you turn on the television and grieve the very Spirit you have cried for. I'm sorry, but... But it's true. And to be afraid, why can't I watch that television? Do I not have a television in that sense because I'm more spiritual than you? No, it's because I am more afraid. I know what that thing will do to me. It will grab me. I am not strong enough. I'm not as strong as you. I'm not as powerful as you. I can't look at even one little bit of that thing because if I do, it will grab me and suck me in. It is being afraid. As I've told you, I'm an outdoorsman and I love the outdoors. And my little boy, he loves the outdoors. And he'll get wandering out there in the backwoods with me and he'll stray farther and farther. I'll tell him, come back, come back. He'll stray farther and then I'll just let him go. I'll hide behind trees. I'll keep track of him. I'll make sure that a coyote can't get him. But sooner or later, he begins to realize he's alone. And he calls out to Dad, and Dad does not answer. And he gets very, very afraid. And you say, you're a cruel father. No, I'm a good father. I'm teaching him something. I'm teaching him what the Lord has often taught me in nights of silence. Oh, we run so bold. And then we run a little bit farther and a little bit farther because we're always thinking we can run back. But you don't realize there is one like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he is not afraid of the sheep. He's afraid of the shepherd. And you had better cling to that shepherd. I can recall how many times my boy, when I would finally appear behind a tree, would run up and grab me by the leg and just hold on to my pants leg. You couldn't have pried him off with a crowbar. That's the way I want to walk with the Lord because that's the only safe place. That is the only safe place. Come down. You see, every time you think, I can do this, every time you stray away, you've gone to high places, you've become proud, you've become independent, and you're walking in a dangerous place. Do you want the power of God? More importantly, do you want the presence of God in your life? Well, then you have to come down. How dependent are you upon God? Talk to me about your prayer life. And I'll be able to tell you how dependent you are upon God.